I know I've also had women that just uh, day after day they're like would you not go to sleep with me man like you, you know and I'm like I'm no I refuse I, I I refuse because I truly believe that every time you sleep with someone you should be making a baby with them hello you beautiful beautiful be hi oh thanks for being here Welcome to Joel Reads Bible. I'm Joel, and I'm reading the Bible, so you don't have to. No, you do. You don't. Oh, you don't have to. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't open it. Don't open it. I'm like the Catholic Church. I don't want you to read it. You don't have to read the Bible, guys. I'll do it, and I'll read it at you to you. I'll read it to you. Every single episode is a chapter of the Bible. If you hadn't realized this already, last episode I thought we were going to be talking about Joseph, but no, we talked about. Onanism and having sex with your daughter-in-law, who you think is a prostitute. So, just more typical tomfoolery from the Hebrew people of the Bible. They're fun, and they're zany, and they're tricky, and they're cute, and I love them. They're just such scamps. But this chapter, chapter 39, we're back with Joseph. He was sold into slavery. There, is, I know you guys are like, slavery in the Bible? Never heard of such a thing. Yeah, there is. But this kind of slavery is not Hebrews having slaves. That you wouldn't think happens. But no, this is the Egyptians having slaves, which of course they would. They're bad. Let's get back into it. It's, it's chapter 39. And if you haven't subscribed, you really want to do that right now. Hit the subscribe button there. Like this video. Maybe leave a comment if you find something interesting or you hate one of my jokes or you just want me to stop doing this and have all the plagues of Egypt visited upon me. Genesis chapter 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. These people who are often described as godless, or they don't have the fear of God, or there's nothing, basically it seems like they don't believe in God, or something along those lines, they notice that, oh, God has found favor in you. Now, I wonder if they notice God has found favor in you, or if they go, this guy's good at everything. This guy's really successful. And we know that the reason why this is happening is that God has found favor in Joseph and he makes his life easy and he makes him good at everything. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, he's actually noticing the Lord. I, I think he's actually aware of this God and is acknowledging that God. But why is the Lord with Joseph? Just because he's his guy? It really does feel like that. What has Joseph done to deserve this? Can you do something to deserve that? I've said it before and I'll say it again. It seems like God's favor is given arbitrarily. And that's a great sort of like indicator that God chooses people. The people don't choose God in the same way. And obviously that kind of theology is going to come up in the book, probably more when we get into the New Testament. We're already kind of seeing a lack of choice, if you will, on the part of the individual when God's like, no, I like that one. Doesn't matter what he did. Doesn't matter who he is. And then other people are just like, no, dead. Or, eh, do what you want. Sleep with a prostitute. You know what I mean? It's just like, what's the rhyme or reason here? From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Lucky Potiphar. Imagine buying a slave that's just like a genie. Like he's got God just like sitting there going like, yeah, God's on my side. He'll, he'll take care. He's just blessing me. 
he's just prosperity gospeling me and I mean uh b blessing me constantly so I don't really have to worry about anything and Potiphar's like yeah keep doing that I'm yeah as, if you're I mean I own you and I, I've noticed that God hasn't particularly done anything about that but you know what well, it's making it easier on you, isn't it? Because all you have to do is sit behind that desk and work on that abacus. Now, Joseph was well-built and handsome. Of course he was. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph, oh dear, and said, come to bed with me. I know I'm Egyptian, but I mean, <laughs> your people have slept with my people for years. And you know, you know who the Ishmaelites are? Have you heard of the Ishmaelites? But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you. Because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against Potiphar? No, God, of course. It's a sin against God. Sleeping with Potiphar's wife is a sin against God. We got one. We got a sin against God, guys. We got, write it down. A sin against God is sleeping with another man's wife sometimes. I mean, I don't know if it's ever happened where you sleep with another man's wife and it's not a sin against God, but maybe if the husband has died. We'll see how David feels about that. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused. Hey, I've been there. Hey, I've been there, Jay, Jay Bird. Oh, man. Yeah, no. Yeah, jo Joey. Yeah, no, I've also had women that just Day after day, they're like, would you not go to sleep with me, man? Like, you know, and I'm like, I'm no, I refuse. I, I, I refuse because I truly believe that every time you sleep with someone, you should be making a baby with them. Because I don't, I'm not wicked in the eyes of the Lord. Anyway, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. What? Even like hang out with her? I'm not even going to hang out with you. I don't want, I don't even want a platonic relationship with you, to be honest. I mean, look at the color of your skin. And that's not me saying that. I, I love all women. They're historically very racist. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside. Shouldn't it be and, and none of the household servants were inside? I think I just found a typo. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Joseph does not have a lot of luck with the jackets that he wears. <laughs> and this is the writer being like, Okay, so if we wanted to show that he was dead, we'll use a coat. If we want to show that he was cheating, we'll just do the coat thing again. How about that? Yeah, let's just you know what? Just do the coat thing again. That's the writer's room. When he saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew, ooh, now she's the racist, this effing Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Potiphar? Oh yeah. <laughs> he can get angry. That's actually, that's something that I know about him. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. That makes sense. That all checks out. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. 
So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison. Of course, of course. And he was made responsible for all that was done there. You wouldn't you would give a prisoner that responsibility. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why except that they're a prisoner? Other than that, why wouldn't you? Like think of a good reason. Is there any good reason to not do that? Except that they're a prisoner? Is there any good reason? The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Well, that's another super fun folk tale uh, featuring, of course, Joseph, that wonderful man. And this time we get a wife who, oh, is so horny for him. Oh, she's so horny for him. Oh, she wants him so bad. Women, when they get their sights set on a beautiful hunk of a man, mm, they will throw themselves at him over and over again. And he'll say no, and it just builds and builds and builds until one day they have to frame him for cheating. Definitely a reasonable story. Because, like, I know that from experience. Women chasing you through the streets, you know what I mean? And and you know, if I were ever in a house w- uh, just with them, only them, oh, my reputation would become trash because I'd have to deny them. And they would be so mad because they want me so much that, you know, they would they would try to screw me over. And I'm just so happy that, you know, you can't go to jail for being wanted by women anymore because I would be in there for life. Even when I'm in jail, there would probably be other women who would be there probably for conjugal visits with like another guy and then they'd see me and they'd be like, oh my goodness, I actually want him. And I'd be like, I don't even, actually he tried to sleep with me just now. And I'd be like, I was sitting all the way over here doing this other visitation with this other woman that wants to sleep with me. And then all the other guys in the, there would be like, get him and give him more time. And the judge would be like, hey, he tried to sleep with my wife too. And I'd be there for like six life sentences just by being this beautiful man. Because like Joseph, I'm well built and handsome. It's tough. <laughs> Okay, it's tough. But this and this is probably partly why you guys are subscribing and uh, liking these videos and ringing that bell. (laughs) Also, you want an angel to get its wings. That's why we ring the bell. But I know I'm fun to watch. I know I'm good to look at. Does it make me feel like a piece of meat? Kinda. But do I hate it? Not really. If I'm honest, not really. (laughs) But yeah. See you next time.